Hey guys, I hope you all are doing good. Uh, I know it's been a little while since I did a video, but we had Thanksgiving and then Christmas hit us, and it just gets so busy this time of year. But I've still been active, and so I haven't gone anywhere, and I just wanted to kind of do this video. I, I, I came out to the greenhouse. It was like 29 degrees outside. So I decided to come out, and I got inside of here, and I looked at the temperature, and without the heat on, it's like 52 in here. I think that's what it is. Yeah, it's it's 50, it's 52 inside the greenhouse here with no heat, and it's 29 outside. So, at any at any rate, uh, the reason why I'm doing this video is because when I came out, I just kind of sat in this chair and just thought, wow, it's so cold outside and it's so beautiful in here that I decided that I was going to jot down why I love my greenhouse so much. And then I realized, you know what, I think I'm going to make 10 reasons why I think everybody should own a greenhouse. And so I did this quick little list, and uh, yeah, it's not on here. I just was, that's kind of a, a <laughs> I don't know what I was doing. But uh, anyways, I'm just going to run through these. I'm going to do, uh, I think, in order of importance. So uh, start with number 10, which is, like, number one is going to be my number one reason. So I'm just going to run right off and start these and the, the top 10 reasons why I think everybody should own a greenhouse. Now, I know not everybody can own one because I know a lot of people live in the city. They live in apartments and stuff like that, and you can't. Maybe you can get one of those little plastic ones to put on on a balcony if you have a balcony, but... Um, at any rate, this you know if you happen to have an area that you can actually put a greenhouse up, I know so many people. In fact, 99.9% .9 of the people I know that actually have property don't own a greenhouse. I just that that blows my mind. But anyways, so the top 10 reasons why I think everyone who has the room should own a greenhouse. All right. Okay. So number 10, overwintering plants. If you've got plants that don't like to. Uh, be outside in the cold if you got them in pots or whatever you can bring them inside the greenhouse they're going to go dormant and then you know you can just leave them in here ignore them and they'll go all winter long and you know hopefully not you know if, if you get your greenhouse a little bit heated it'll it'll keep them from freezing too much or whatnot but um overwintering plants i don't have a lot of plants that i personally overwinter because mine are really hardy to my growing zone which is 7b uh, but I do have some other plants, tropical, subtropical, that, but I'll get into that soon. So if you have any plants that like to go dormant, you have them in pots, you can bring them into the greenhouse, let them go dormant, and then just ignore them, and you just overwinter them, and then bring them back out in the spring, and you're good to go. Number nine, extending your growing season. Now, really soon, in it, probably February, I'm going to be starting tomatoes and other things that, that are warm season vegetables that, that love the heat, but... I can't start them yet because the, the, you can't let them freeze or get too cold. So uh, since my heater kicks on at about 45 or 50 degrees, I can start I can start my seedlings in here, and then by April I've got tomato plants that are starting to grow gangbusters. And when most people are just putting their starts in the garden, I've already got tomatoes that are starting. I mean, I got plants that are starting to flower already. And so at the beginning of the season, I'm extending it at least a month and a half or so. And then at the end of the season, October or so, uh, I'm extending it there because I can keep growing tomatoes all through the summer. And then in middle of November, I'm still picking tomatoes. So in my 7B, I'm extending my 7B to 8.5 or 9 even. Number 8, growing tropical or subtropical. Since I've, since I've increased my growing zone to like 8B or 9 or even 9B, I'm able to grow things like, like the Chilean guava. Now this, this Chilean guava, which is also called, called ugni berry, will not survive in 7B. It just gets too cold. Sometimes we get down in the teens and it, just, it will just keel over dead. So I have it in here and it never is exposed to, to freezing temperatures. And uh, it, it just loves it. it thr now it's not it's not growing it's not growing a lot in here at these temperatures, but it's not dying. It's kind of just settling down for the winter, and uh, it's perfectly happy in here. So I have a, a pineapple guava also, and I've got some other things that are kind of subtropical that love it in here. I've got my uh, you guys have seen my mandarin orange and my key lime, my lemon and whatnot. Uh, they they love it in here because it never gets freezing. So. Number seven, harvesting vegetables all year long. Now, I have uh, outside there 
you guys have seen my uh, my my raised beds where I built the little greenhouse over it. I'll put a link below to that too. And so in there, I've got a lot of kale and I've got spinach and whatnot. Because I'm in 7B, uh, I I am still able to. What a blessing that is because I'm still able to grow a lot of greens that a lot of people in like five or six can't grow. So uh, I I don't I grow some in the greenhouse. For instance, I've got peas growing here. I've got some sugar snap peas. I've got um, these here are dwarf gray sugar, and I've got some over here also, some more peas that are growing really well. And you'll notice these, and I actually made a mistake with these, and I left these out, and it got down to like 17 degrees, and, and, and the, the dirt was a, a frozen solid. <laughs> but they, they, they survived. They did just well. I brought them into the greenhouse. They thawed out, and they're, they're just, just as green as can be. So uh, these these. These peas are doing are doing wonderfully. You can grow those in. Like I say, it, it doesn't get below 45 in here. I've got so I've got kale that I had some kale in here, but I took it out. Uh, but I do have lettuce over here. I've got some lettuce growing, and um, I've got some broccoli growing and things like that. And uh, they're just loving the greenhouse. So I'm having fresh vegetables all year long. Now I'm not growing tomatoes in here, of course, because I need to crank it up to 80 in here. And I wouldn't be able to let it get below 50 and, you know, 55 or 60 even. And uh, tomatoes need lots of heat, so they're lovers. So I, I have tomato plants inside, and you guys have seen those before. So, uh, But inside the greenhouse, I just don't crank the heat up that much. You could if you wanted to. You could grow tomatoes all year long. You're just going to have to find better ways to insulate, too, and not let the, not let the heat escape. Uh, but you could. You could grow tomatoes also all year long. So number six. This kind of goes hand in hand with the last one. Uh, harvesting vegetables all year long. This one is saving money on your grocery bill. Now because I'm growing peas and I've got kale and I've got lettuce and broccoli and spinach and all that stuff, I'm, I'm able to just come out to the greenhouse and pick a salad and take it inside and I never never fired the car up, never went to the grocery store and I'm, I'm saving a lot of money. I, I, I got a little bit on heat but I'm gonna run the electricity anyways for all my subtropicals and stuff so all the rest of it's a plus, so I'm saving money on my grocery bill. Number five, growing in a controlled environment. Now, outside, you can grow a lot of things outside in the winter time. You know, kale is cold hardy and spinach and things like that. But the problem is, is that you can't control the heat or the weather. And so, inside the greenhouse, I'm able to grow in the winter, but I'm also able to control the climate. I've got fans up here, I've got a heater, I can control the heat up and down. I can control the humidity, I've got vents, and so I can create the perfect environment inside of here for everything that I'm growing. And even in the summertime, if it gets really hot, I can put a shade cloth on, I've got vents, I've got fans, I can control the environment. So it's much easier to control. I found that it's a lot easier to control a lot of pests too inside the greenhouse. I just don't get pest problems inside the greenhouse like I do outside or even in my grow room sometimes. That you have to control. So number four, beating the winter blues. A lot of times, I, you know, like you look outside and it'll just be cloudy, it'll be nasty. And I come out to the greenhouse, and the sun is shining in here, and it's warm. And I, I start thinking when I come in here, believe it or not, like it could be December and it could be 10 degrees outside, or well, we don't usually get 10 degrees. But it can be bitter cold outside, and then I come in here and it's 75, and I'm sitting down, I'll bring my, my tablet out, and I'll read a book on my tablet or something, and I think I'm outside basking in the sun. So, I mean, it totally beats the winter blues. Um, it's, it's my own little my own little solar home, you know, so. Number three, now this one is not for a lot of people, but there are a lot of people that like to have a greenhouse business. They like to... Uh, there, uh, like I know a guy who's just down the street here that came over and looked at my greenhouse. He bought one of them. He's he's growing orchids and he's selling orchids and he's growing flowers in his greenhouse and he sells flowers and and whatnot right out of his. So he's got a greenhouse business already and just with a little. I mean, he doesn't make a lot of money. He doesn't make much, but at least he's you know supplementing his income. So you can definitely do that. He could grow and grow, go to farmers markets and and uh, and just sell at farmers markets and, and whatnot. I know that's not for a lot of people, but it's certainly an option if you do have a greenhouse. Number two, self-reliance and independence. I like being able to, if the conditions are bad, it's snowing or the weather's really horrible, you can't get out, you can't go to the grocery store or whatever, 
I can come out here. This kind of grows hand, goes hand in hand with the other ones there about being able to come out and, and grow all year long. But the independence and the self-reliance that goes along with that, I don't need the grocery store. I mean, the whole the world could collapse, and I've got a greenhouse. I've, I've got fresh fr fresh fruits and vegetables all winter long, and uh, in the summertime, of course, you know the same thing. But I don't have to rely on the grocery store so much. If you know, if some kind of natural disaster or something happened, or economic collapse, I'm not one of those doomsdayers. But if that did happen, I'm I'm good to go. I'm uh, we'll, we'll never starve. How's that? That's We'll just we'll never starve. And now number one, the number one reason why everyone should own a greenhouse. Greenhouses are cheaper than therapy. Now what I mean by that is that, now I'm not suggesting I need therapy, but actually probably a lot of people would say that I do need therapy. Uh, but what I mean by that is that I can come out here, I can do what I love all year long. I... I I mean, gardening is my life. This is what I love to do. Uh, you could just plant me in a garden the rest of my life and I'm good to go. But uh, I don't have to, I mean, it just kind of, it's, it's going along with killing the winter blues and they kind of go side by side. But um, it's, it's more of what I love to do and I'm able to do it. There's some people that like to play, they like to play soccer all year. They can only play it when it's warm out. They like to play football. You can't do it all the time. And so... Uh, I can do what I love all year long and I don't, you know, I don't, I've got full spectrum lights in here when I want to kick them on and, you know, there are people that suffer from light deprivation and you don't have to worry about it. Get a greenhouse, you come out here, it's warm, you got plenty of light, you can sit, you can read, you can drink a cup of coffee and, and life is good. So it's cheaper than therapy. I just kind of come in here and I can just, I can feel my, my blood pressure lower down, you know, and I can just feel my... I don't know. You just there's just a, a solitude to it. There's a there's a calming effect that if you've never had a greenhouse, you'll never understand. I don't think you'll understand the calming effect that you get when it's cold out and you walk into a warm greenhouse. That that's just like that's like heaven. It really is. So, um, anyways, so there's the top ten reasons why everybody should own a greenhouse. For what they're worth, they're my top ten. I kind of scratched them down quickly, but uh, if anybody else has some more they want to add to the list. Uh, I always post my my videos out on my website, grow, uh, growyourheirlooms.com, so go out there and check it out. But I'll, I'll put, if anybody has any more, I'll put some more out there when I, when I create the post, all right? Anyways, the top 10 reasons why you need to buy a greenhouse if you have the room and the money. I guess there's, there's money spent too, but anyways. All right, well, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Don't forget to subscribe. I hope you guys had a great Christmas, and I hope you have a happy, safe New Year, all right? Catch you later.